sometimes projects don't work out quite the way you expect. My name is David Gewertz and welcome to DIY IT's discovery series on 3D printing. This week we attempt, and don't succeed, at building a NASA wrench. And I'll tell you a little about it. In fact, I've got a third version of it attempting to print right now. So, this is a wrench. Now what happens if you need one of these up on the space station and you don't happen to have one? Well, that's the challenge that NASA set out to answer. Because what if you could take a spool of filament like this and keep that up in the space station and then create whatever tools you might happen to need? That's a general purpose solution for physical objects and that's an amazing opportunity. So interestingly, NASA released the plans for a small wrench, which sort of looks like this, except I broke mine. Um, they released their plans for a wrench, uh, which they actually sent up to the space station and printed. Now, there's a couple differences between the, pr the wrench I've tried printing as an experiment here with our discovery series and the one that NASA printed. But first, let me show you my first attempt. Okay, so here we are. Um, I haven't yet taken the wrench off the build plate. Let me uh, make it focus for you so you can see it. It's pretty cool. So I have no idea at this point whether this is going to work or not. Um, so let's find out. Uh, one of the things that's different about this is um, I built this thing using PLA because the MakerBot printer I have is a PLA only printer. And as a result, um, it's not gonna be as robust as a PLA printer, which has a little bit more flex in the plastic and isn't quite as brittle. And so this is basically a prototype wrench as opposed to something that you would expect to really work. Um, I just want to see if the concept works. So let's just get it up here so you can look at it. There you go. There's some mechanism in the back. So let's see if it works. Got my trusty old wrench set here. Let's grab a socket. So first off, if you can see that, it does fit right there. Try that again. Right, it does fit. All right, so righty tighty, not moving at all. Okay, so let's see if we can crack it loose internally in any way. Whoops. All right. Well, that's our answer right there. Uh, Apparently using a 30% infill on the wrench unit itself is not a smart move. So we're just gonna, I guess, end the story here. So the thing is, is that the first one I built used an infill percentage of 10%. What that meant is that the inner stuff in here, in the plastic, wasn't solid. It was only 10% solid. And you can kind of see that. I'm going to hold this up and see if I can zoom in on it. You can kind of see that in the nobule here. This is the part that actually hooks onto the wrench and you use to turn. Well, I printed it basically hollow. And so the first time I tried to turn it, it broke. So the second time I attempted to print it, I attempted to print it fully solid, which is this. Now, one of the things I should tell you is that I attempted to print this using PLA when the actual space station was using ABS plastic. Now, ABS plastic is a little bit more flexible and a little bit more robust. PLA, while a little bit more biodegradable and doesn't have the kind of stank that ABS has, um, is a little bit more brittle. And in this case, we also found another interesting problem, which is that it warps. So let me put these two side by side, and you can kind of see that when I tried to print it solidly, see how it warps? 
that's because it pulled up off the build plate. Um, I'm going to try to sneak this over here and you can kind of see that it, let's do it this way, that it didn't fully adhere to the build plate. So that's the second attempt. Now one of the challenges of doing this column on a weekly basis is that there's the time, the, the lead time, the build time it takes for a printer to run one of these things and I'm out of time for getting a third attempt in time for the column. So we're going to stop here and work with it. Um, because each of these takes, you know, somewhere between three and eight hours to print. And so if I've got a couple of attempts, I've pretty much run out of time. As a result, what I tend to do is I tend to start these projects Sunday night and work on them on and off with the attempt to get them completed by Friday morning to be put up. So one of the things that I'm going to try is, uh, is this material, which is a much more tacky surface that was sent to me by a company called BuildTac. And essentially what it does is it replaces the blue tape that's over here with a better, more robust surface. Now I haven't tried it yet, but a lot of people swear by it. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, but a couple of very interesting lessons should come out of this experiment. First off, experimenting is good. We're, we're talking about, I don't know, 50 cents worth of material here. It's not, it's not an expensive experiment. It is important to be aware that I was violating a couple of the things that were done for NASA to bring it to make it work. I did not use the same material and I did in this case I just used the defaults, the build defaults which are 10% um, infill and um, whatever the density was and so as a result you know this thing is pretty easy to break apart. I'm not breaking it here but you know, it, it's not a really robust system. In terms of this one, I attempted to do it fully, completely, in other words, with, with no infill. And the problem is, is that the reason it lifted off the bed is as each layer was hotter on the bottom, the, 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 on the top, the bottom subsequently cooled. As it cooled, the temperature differential created warping because some were warmer and therefore a different density than the stuff that was cooler, which pulled it up. And so managing that process becomes a key piece of 3D printing, especially when you're doing a precision part like this. Overall though, I think this was a really interesting experiment. First off, I got a chance to hold, even if it's <clears throat> not entirely functional and slightly broken, a tool that is used up on the space station and was sent to the space station via email. So that's amazing. The second thing is, is I got to really get a feel for what the difference is in terms of how dense I make the, the, the tool, how dense I make the, the, the build, and how it affects the production of it. Um, third, I got to think about materials and different kinds of materials and how they might work better. Again, this is a PLA, PLA only machine. I might at some point work with an ABS machine as well and see the differences. And we're gonna start experimenting with different build plate toppings, basically the material that's designed to hold or adhere the object to the build plate, we're going to start experimenting with that. So lots of interesting stuff. That's why this is a discovery series and not just a here, do it like this series. We're discovering this stuff together. We're learning about how it works and what makes it happen. So there you go. That's this week's project. Um, feel free to hit the little button in the corner if you want to be notified when new videos are out and read the companion article that goes with it. My name is David Gewertz for DIYIT on ZDNet. Thank you very much. And once again, I have a big thank you to the MakerBot folks for uh, providing the MakerBot replicator that we we're using on this project and to the BuildTac people for sending me the BuildTac, which we'll look at in a future episode. Have a great time and build something great. If you build one of these wrenches, send me some pictures or a video. I'll, uh, I'll post it to people. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.